I woke up from a nap and I had over like 600 messages that were asking me to identify and confirm that was my brother, John. This is James Sullivan's brother, John Sullivan. The 25 year old from Utah was arrested and charged for his role in the Capitol insurrection. Let's burn the down. According to court documents, John Sullivan faces charges of entering a restricted building without lawful authority, one count of violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds, and one count of interfering with law enforcement. Dude, you're not helping, you're not helping, you're not helping. Right, you're gonna get me hurt. In a video he shot during the insurrection, John Sullivan says he was there as a journalist. Uh, no, he is not a uh, reporter in any way. Uh, he started in Surgeons TV. And um, he just uh, actually like started going into full like radicalism and going in preaching and hosting rallies. John Sullivan denied his brother's claims in an interview with our Eric Flack. I have no relationship. I do not talk to him like in any sort of way that he would be even able to get this information. This is Michael Popak, Legal AF. I've covered a lot of the Jan 6 defendants being sentenced, but the strangest and oddest case is the one I'm gonna tell you about now. It has to do with John Earl Sullivan, 29 years old out of Utah. If I just told you the facts that he fomented as a chaos agent, violence, handed out a uh, knife, attacked the police, and also filmed the uh, killing of Ashley Babbitt by security forces as she tried to attack the speaker's hallway to make her way into the chamber. And then he sold that footage, claiming to be a journalist for $90,000. You'd say, all right, good, lock him up. And if I also told you that he was in the Washington Metro Detention Center all this time for the last five months in isolation, you'd say, good. There's a strange twist to this case. I won't talk to you more about it right now. First of all, John Earl Sullivan is not on the right side of the political spectrum, apparently. He's on the far left side. He was a supporter of the Black Lives Movement. He was a supporter of anti-fascism movements. He has a brother from his adopted family who is a right-wing conservative activist named James Sullivan. John Sullivan, before Jan 6th, if you looked at him on social media with his 500,000 followers, for all intents and purposes, was a young man who was involved with left and anti-fascist and pro-Black Lives Matter movements. How did he end up being arrested, convicted by a federal jury of four or five different felony counts and now sentenced to six years in prison? Let me tell you. Apparently, he had posted on social media things that indicated that he was not a Trumper. He was not MAGA. He was the opposite. In fact, he said he was going to go down to Jan 6 to confront the Trumpers, confront the fascists in his view. But when he got there and he saw that things had taken a turn, there had been a tipping point, and that there was about to be or in the midst of an attack on the Capitol, he tried to use that to his advantage. Because the one thing that he had in common with the Trump supporters one thing only is he wanted to burn down the government and burn down from a anti-fascism standpoint. He wanted to burn down the government. And so he joined forces with them, acted like he was one of them, used a bullhorn to try to uh, encourage the mob to seize and to surge forward to attack the police, got his way into the Capitol, got his way a foot or two behind Ashley Babbitt as she tried to climb over through the broken window down the speaker's hallway and then was shot by security forces, recorded that footage, and then tried to sell it. But the whole time he was a, I don't know, kind of a double agent because he wasn't a pro-Trump supporter. He was an anti-fascist supporter that in the moment decided, as the judge referred to it, became a chaos agent effectively for profit, having made $92,000 selling the Ashley Babbitt uh, video. If you look at, I'm going to read to you from the Department of Justice outline of him, and you're just going to be, your head's going to start spinning, but I'm going to try to keep it centered on your shoulders right here for this examination because it's important. Now, the right wing found out about John Earl Sullivan, and they've decided to try to use him as an example that this was a 
a, a government plot, that it wasn't the Trumpers that were leading this charge. It was left-wing activists, and they point to John Earl Sullivan as an example of that. Rudy Giuliani jumped on the bandwagon to talk about John Earl Sullivan as being uh, that none of these were Trumpers, none of these were MAGA, although we know from the arrest of 2,500 people and the investigation by the Department of Justice and that of the Jan 6 Committee that that's not true. There is this one oddity, this anomaly of John Earl Sullivan right? The adopted son of a lieutenant colonel in the army whose brother is a right-wing activist. Let me read to you from the Department of Justice describing the bad things that he did, which explains why he's in isolation because, because he's on the Jan 6th violent defender wing, but he is not a Trumper. So they have, a, they have a, not only abandoned him, they uh, they don't want to be associated with him. They've had to put the, the guy in isolation for the last five months, a point that the judge noted in his sentencing. So here's what we've got so far in the uh, from the Department of Justice. In the winter of 2020, Sullivan began advocating for a violent government dismantling. This is the, the Department of Justice explaining the case. In one Instagram post, Sullivan wrote, we all have live updates on the location of tonight's purge. Spread the message. Let the electoral purge commence. On Jan 2, 2021, he tweeted, F the system, time to burn it all down, with an accompanying still from a TikTok video of him burning an American flag. So he's not a Trumper. Uh, Sullivan also made it clear he knew the significance of what would be occurring that day, both the certification on Jan 6 and the rally. He made and posted a video explaining the details of the certification process, a very bright, high-functioning person. On December 30th, he wrote, definitely don't surround his house with a photo of Senator Mitch McConnell. On Jan 6, 2021, Sullivan fitted with a ballistic vest, gas mask, and bullhorn joined rioters storming the U.S. Capitol. He joined the crowd, pushing through several police barriers. Again, he's got something in common with the Trumpers. They want to burn the house down. They want to burn the Capitol down. So does John Sullivan. He uh, uses a bullhorn to encourage others, uh, others with statements like, get in, get in that S, let's go, move, 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 storm that shit. As Sullivan and the others approach the Capitol building, Sullivan can be heard in the video saying at various points, there are so many people, let's go. This is ours. F yeah, F yeah, let's burn it down. He then triumphantly put his hands above his head and let out a celebratory whoops. At 2.15 p.m. on Jan 6, he entered the Capitol through a smashed window Next to the broken Senate wing door, and once inside, he roamed the building with other individuals. Uh, at 2.28, he joined the crowd growing outside the house, working his way up the front where he was stopped by Capitol Police. He handed out his knife to somebody to use. He encouraged people. He filmed what happened with Ashley Babbitt. Uh, and that is where we are with John Sullivan where he, as an opportunist, as a chaos agent, just wanted violence for violence's sake, something he had in common with the Trumpers. This was all noted by Judge Royce Lampert, who sentenced them to a pretty stiff sentence. The jury convicted him. Uh, you know, he went through a full jury trial of multiple felonies, including obstruction of an official proceeding, which we know is a little bit on, uh, on a teetering edge here with the United States Supreme Court, who may end up declaring that that is an improper charge, but he was charged with deadly assault and with a weapon. So I don't think that's going to disturb his ultimate sentence that he's just received. But I mean, I've covered dozens and dozens of Jan 6 defendants. We can't get Jan 6 defendant sentencing fatigue or the work that the Department of Justice has done through the DC court system here. But this one, this is the oddest one. If you would have told me that a guy whose brother is a right-wing activist, who's a far-left activist and Black Lives Matter person, would enter the crowd and then try to use it to his own advantage in order to burn down the Capitol because he saw that as the seat of fascism and, then, and also battle with police to try to violently attack them and also film Ashley Babbitt being uh, properly uh, killed by the 
by the Secret Service and others in their attempts to protect uh, members of Congress, House and Senate from being assassinated, I'd say, you're making this up, right? This can't be. And throw in there, he's from Utah and his father's lieutenant colonel in the army. I mean, they're going to make a movie out of this. Uh, but I needed to report on it because it's also because he's been the focus uh, of so much attention by the right wing. You'll hear, and I want you to be ready when they pull out that, that talking point and they say, what about John Earl Sullivan? He was a Black Lives Matter and he was there trying to burn down the house and that, everybody was, yeah, not everybody was a Black Lives Matter supporter in that crowd. The vast majority, 99% of that crowd had ill intent to do grievous bodily harm on any elected official they found there in support of their cult leader, Donald Trump. We know that. We know that from the video evidence. We know that from their own social media that the government has gotten their hands on. We know it from the Gen 6 report. We know it from the trials over and over again, bench trials and jury trials that have established the facts in this case by the Department of Justice at the highest burden beyond a reasonable doubt against each of these people. That is the facts that you, you, you need to use to combat somebody in your life that you run into that says, there was, uh, there was agitators in the crowd that made the crowd attack the Capitol. Untrue. These people came armed with a plan led by former law enforcement, current law enforcement, former military personnel, current military personnel to attack the Capitol. That was their plan to take back the House, and that's exactly what they did. Need to wait a minute here for the passing cars. So we'll continue to follow here on the Midas Touch Network and Legal AF, the Jan 6 defendant sentencing, because it's oh so important. I do it one place right here exclusively on the Midas Touch Network. Free subscribe and help them get to 3 million free subscribers before the November election. It's that important. You're helping us build the network that you've been waiting for. We're doing it with your help. We're grassroots, no outside investors. Join me on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the Midas Dutch Legal AF podcast. We sit at the intersection of law and politics so you don't have to. And it's lawyers talking about things that they know what they're talking about. How refreshing. If you want to find out why we call it Legal AF, join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And you like the law and you want to know more about it, we have a new Patreon, patreon.com slash Legal AF. It's like a TED Talk meets a law school class with exclusive content you can't find anywhere else on the internet or on YouTube, but on the Legal AF Patreon, patreon.com slash Legal AF. Exclusive videos, exclusive content, teachable moments, hot talks, hot takes, everything you can think of all in one place for the cost of the initial membership is uh, one or two cups of coffee a month. That's it. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, so my next Patreon exclusive content, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.